Hey everybody, welcome to the Flats Class YouTube channel. And today I've got, well, before we even get started, why don't you just reach over there, that, that little subscribe button, and push it for me. That's right. I promise you, I'm gonna make you better at fishing. But I gotta have your help too. All right, back to the problem at hand. Probably three, four weeks ago, I did a, a YouTube video um, that was fairly popular to teach most of you how to cast further, uh, enhance your ability to make better casts. And because it did so well, I want you to go back and watch that. This video is going to be about casting, but it's going to be a little bit different. This video is going to make you more of a smart caster an efficient caster what i would call a badass caster if you will because there are certain aspects of being able to make the right cast that can separate you from all of your fishing buddies it's a fact uh, most all the guys that i know their best cast is their longest cast because you know why that's all they do they just pump out the longest cast on a seven and a half foot rod that they can on every effort. They don't have a very good medium game and they have no short game at all. So how are you going to be a more complete caster, a smarter caster, a badass caster? Well, go watch this little video clip of myself fishing with some clients here. It's a couple. Um, and they're the type of couple that they don't get on the water as often, but I've worked with them for a long time to make them better casters. And then when you come back, we're gonna go inside where it's a hell of a lot warmer. And I'm gonna share some of these strategies that are gonna make you a better caster. It's blowing. It's a blowing today. A good Eldora day. The best. even goes to the right a little bit over here too there you go there you go there's somewhere in here and they go way down to the left too it goes all the way left Ooh. there you go you got him go. keep that rod high there you go just high and steady steady reeling girl steady reeling I can't tell if it's a trout or a redfish. It's staying down. It's not coming up like a trout. Staying down like a red. Look, looking more redfish all the time. Well done. move there Carol. We won't put you in the water. All right. Give him a little line. Just open your bail. There you go. Feels much better in here. <laughs> I didn't turn the heater on in here but compared to being outside it is uh, it is much warmer. Now, in the, the clip there with my, Mike and Carol Shipley, 
you'll notice that I didn't have them making super long casts. This video is going to be more about target fishing, understanding how the fish want to set up, where the cast has to be. And oftentimes, that's going to be a medium length cast. Occasionally, it's a short cast depending on if we're in a creek, uh, if I'm out in Louisiana or somewhere in, in South Carolina fishing flooded grass, then the cast could actually be pretty short. But many of the casts that have to be made in a day of fishing really need to be made in a, at a medium distance. And if you're one of those anglers that have fallen prey to, oh, I see a fish over there, and then you make this long cast past them, and then you're trying to steer with your rod to try to get it in front of them, that means you're not casting smart. Uh, and to be a complete caster, you really have to, to master that medium game. If I were going to break it down into golf or basketball or something like that, in basketball, you need that 12 to 15 foot or 12 to 18 foot jump shot. Not everything can be Steph Curry outside the three point line. Uh, and nothing can be a Michael Jordan dunk all the time. So it has, that's where the game is played in that shorter casting length. Or if you're a, a golfer, you can relate it to, you're not gonna have a whole bunch of tapping um, putts and you're not gonna hopefully have too many long, long pump putts where you're laying it up but you gotta get good at that eight to 10 foot putt. So what I'm saying is you're gonna have to learn to smart cast, where you pick a landing zone beyond the fish, depending upon the day, and I'm gonna explain that, that you can bring that lure when it's moving in a natural rhythm by the cone of awareness or the strike zone for that particular fish to catch them. Now, that most often is going to be by, by picking a spot and not looking to where the fish are set up. So when I was pulling Mike and Carol in this particular spot, there was a nice long sand hole that led into that gap between the two islands. But on the other side was a gradual grassy grade that kind of went up into super shallow water. Well, I didn't want them to cast too far or they'd be fouled in the shallow grass before they could get the real, you know, in motion and get that bait swimming. So I needed them to be able to throw it in that six or eight feet where the lure could land, have time to pendulum down and then time to swim back into the hole where they could catch the fish. So I know what their distance is, what they're good at. I want them to make that nice controlled cast. I don't want them having to chuck it a mile and who knows with that wind where that bait would, that lure would land. So in this case, I wanted a smart cast. And in many of the scenarios that I fish clients in, I want them to make a smart cast. Now, how do you do that? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about that right now rod length. I'm not saying that a seven and a half foot rod is not a good rod length to have if you're an inshore angler. It's a great rod length to have. In fact, when I take, let's just say six rods on the Eldora or eight rods on my Hells Bay Professional, Two of those rods are always seven and a half foot rods in case we have to power fish and make long blind casts where the accuracy is not gonna matter as much. It, it, it's not gonna be that big a deal. But most of the time, I will tell you that I have clients and I myself probably move to a seven foot rod. And you're like, oh, seven foot rod, I'm not going to be able to cast very far. Well, you'd be surprised, one, if you watch the first video that I told you to watch in the intro to this video, you would understand why a seven foot rod could cast nearly as far as a seven and a half foot rod by, by doing certain things in your choices with lures and line weights. But mostly because a seven foot rod allows for less error with accuracy. 
So a seven foot rod gives me a combination of distance casting and pinpoint accuracy. That's why we err on that rod length most of the time. We employ it. So rod length is important to me in smart casting too. I like to have a crisper rod action when I have to make an accurate cast. Now, depending person to person, because no, no one would ever be able to convince me with the tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of hours I've had in the water, that you could ever get away with one rod. You can't get away with one rod. We make videos all the time, all around rod, this, that, and the other thing. But it's a unicorn. It's honestly a damn unicorn. You, you can't believe that. Because based off the technique and the species you're targeting and, and the lure itself and just the ambient conditions change that all the time. So the second consideration for me is picking a fairly forgiving rod weight, which is typically a medium, not a medium heavy all the time unless circumstances make it so. And then picking the taper or the, the tip action that I really want, which in most cases won't be moderate and it won't be extra fast. It'll just be fast. But those, I'm going to say, specs that are from brand to brand vary so much, it's hard to make a good decision. So you're going to have to experiment a little bit. Um, I'll give you the, ben the benevolence of my experience. I'm a Shimano guy. I'm paid by Shimano. I don't hide that. So I'm going to talk about a Shimano rod. And then you can draw whatever conclusion you want to your favorite brand, whether that be TFO or, you know, Quantum or Dio or whatever. But I'm going to talk about Shimano. Now, for me, when I'm in the Terramar series, there's a couple of different quality steps in that series that I can choose from to get the results that I want, get that crisper, sharper action so I can make that quick and it goes where I want it to go. In most cases, that's the Terramar PX or XX. That's what I use. That's just what I use. You and you can push that into any one of those other rod brands and figure it out. Um, so rod length, I like seven foot. I like better quality, more crisper actions. Now in the video, you'll notice that my clients were using the, I believe they were, they had the Talavera inshore rod um, is what they were using. And I may even had Carol in a few instances, pick up one of the GLF rods just cause it was a little bit more parabolic and she, you can tell the difference in the cast from Mike and the cast from Curl because one's much sharper than the other. Rod length, crisper rod action. That's what I like the most, but in the weights that I just described, the compact swing, and I talked about that in the very first video, feather your cast. You'll notice when you were watching earlier that clip that when Mike would make a cast, he'd either feather it with his index finger or he'd feather it to slow it down and drop it in the right spot. The ability to feather line is huge because unless you've, that's why I'm a bait caster guy. I swing, thumb it right to the spot, drop it perfectly. That's why you use a bait caster. With a spinning reel, a little trickier, just a little trickier. You've got to be able to index finger it down or you've got to feather it down with your first two fingers, cup the spool, drop it and get right to the reel. Either way, they're very effective. So that's that's the other consideration. Then you, you, you've also got to consider in the smart casting this. For me, I'm trying to figure out sun position. I'm trying to figure out which way the water is flowing and how will the wind affect the cast above the water. So something I utilize a lot in, in my classes, in my seminars, which I actually have one coming up, um, by the way, on February 4th here in Crystal River with one of the, what I would call better known captains, Captain Socrates, big snook guru, um, but he's very uh, versed at other 
types of fishing. So if you're in West Central Florida, Orlando, Ocala, Gainesville, Tampa Bay, want to come up and listen to an incredible fishing school, February 4th, if you want to sign up for that, either call um, Sodium Fishing Gear in Crystal River or go to my website, CaptainCRichardson.com and, and register right there. Uh, it's a paid class and we're only having 50 students, but I guarantee you'll learn more in that four hours with Sock and myself because I, I make sure I get the right information out of my guests that you'll walk away with $50 worth. Plus, we'll have a swag bag and some other things. So what I was saying in my classes, I use a lot of white board stuff here. And if I am not Picasso, okay, so laugh, all right, you done? Okay. What we have here is here's my Hell's Bay Eldora and my caster up here on the bow. I, I, I noted this as a smart cast. So here's the pothole, there's the four silhouettes in the pothole that are in the tide, head facing the tide. Sun is over here somewhere throwing a shadow. So I gotta be careful not to get a cast between the sun and the fish because then they'll see the shadow of the bait and they'll be wary. So what I like to do is your brain tells you, I'm gonna throw a straight line, I'm gonna throw a cross, let it land and then bring it in front of them. Here's the problem with that. By the time you make the cast, feather it down, wind's blowing, current's blowing, now that line comes over their backs and spooks the hell out of them. In fact, I'll draw it on here just so you understand what I mean. So it would probably go right over the top of them before it would straighten it down. So that would be that dotted line. So even though you think the X north of this X would be the place to throw, it's not. It's actually right here because the way the, the tide will push up against your braid, it will swing that in a curve and that's probably your smart cast. But that's why there's considerations that you have to make when you're casting to fish like these that are posted up or set it up or I knew that that would be the likely zone because historically I'm fishing this flat and I know where the fish like to be. Uh, it's not like I'm some wizard that knows where fish always are sitting. A lot of this stuff comes from history. But I will tell you, if you understand the landing zone, you consider, like I started this with, the current, the sun position. You also might even have to consider how much bait fish activity. And you're like, so what the hell does that mean? Well, if there's a lot of chopping mullet in there, it might be hard for them to even pick your lure up. So you might have to throw and cheat it a little bit closer to them. You might get away with a lot more if there's a lot of mullet activity. But in most cases, this time of year, bluebird skies like you saw in the clip, um, and not a lot of mullet activity because water temperatures were cold, there's nothing to hide you. There's nothing to hide where your, where your lure lands or anything. You gotta be smart. So that's what I'm talking about, the smart cast. The cast, the feather down, and then the reel where it's just gonna swing in front of them. And it'll be a natural, pretty rhythm. Uh, most of the lures I had them throwing were smaller paddle tails, uh, little um, straight flukes that don't make a lot of wiggle moves in them, and just let them work them through there and we got some really good results. Now, I'm gonna wrap this up in a minute, but I do not wanna deny you uh, the big catch that Mike made right here. That is an amazing snook catch. He did great. That was his personal best on artificial, um, which as a professional guy, you love it when they always say, hey, I got my personal best with Captain C.A. Richardson. I think all guides like to hear that. Okay, let's review real quick. A couple of things I want you to remind yourself so that you get something out of this video because we're not sitting here watching this for our health. Practice those short and medium casts as much as you can. Whether you do that out in your driveway, your backyard, the local pond, retention pond or lake, just get good at not trying to cast at full send distance all the time. Because I guarantee you, most of your 
most of you out there, your best cast is your full send cast because that's what you do 99% of the time. Don't do it. Don't always do that. There are times when that is the most effective way. But I'm telling you, the lion's share of opportunities come, especially target fishing, in those short to medium cast lengths. Uh, smart cast, always be thinking how the current's moving, how the sun position could give you your lure away in the air. How many times have we seen them spook off? So always be thinking about the landing zone, where it has to land on that smart cast and how fast you can get that lure to its proper tempo coming in front of them. Remember, I've done several videos on what the three most important things are to success catching fish, and that's tempo, size of lure, and color third. If you haven't seen that video, you need to watch that one too. Uh, master feathering line, whether you do it with your index finger when it comes off the spinning spool, or if you cup the line a little bit and drop it, Practice that so that it becomes where it's not clumsy and you just stop it abruptly because it also allow those lures to land more softly. Um, also, remember when I said crisper equipment, better equipment, better equipment in those short to medium casts, it matters. It really does matter a lot because you need that very compact, short, direct cast to catch fish. And then I'd say... Lastly, just watch more Flats Class YouTube. We're here to help you out. We want to make you better. And remember, if you didn't subscribe in the intro, subscribe right now. If I didn't sell you then, by now I should have sold you. And give us the thumbs up. Tell all your fishing buddies. We can make this channel a lot better if more of you are tuned in. All right, I'm off to do one more video today. And then I think, I think I'm going to get ready for my... For my trip tomorrow which is going to be pretty frigid they say it's going to be 33 in the morning so i'll probably get a 9 10 o'clock start see you guys